Welcome to part three of the Heathkit AA1219 series. In part one, I unboxed this 1980s unbuilt integrated amp kit. And in part two, I built it. And of course, I also told you how you can win this kit to be your very own. I'll leave the rules for the giveaway at the end of this video, but basically just subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on any of my videos. Each comment gives you one chance to win. And I'll announce the winner in a standalone video, which will be released shortly after this one. In this video though, I'll share with you some interesting details about the build process and also how the completed amp performs. You'll get the results of my bench testing and also a demonstration. So stay tuned to the end for that. Now, if you saw the last video, you know the completed amp looks like this. But to get to this point, there were a few things I had to do that weren't covered in the build manual. Take the power transformer, for example. Uh, as it had been sitting for so many years, its paper wrapping had become one with the protective tar-like coating. So the transformer got a little bath. Replacement transformers can be difficult to come by with older equipment, so it was necessary to test the transformer before getting too deep into the project. And once connected to high voltage, my multimeter told me that the transformer was working just fine. Some corrosion had formed on the RCA jack, so those two got a cleaning and polish. Nice, much better. I knew the controls had likely developed corrosion as well, so I took the opportunity to clean them with neutral before I began the build. And I also subjected them to some tests and they all passed with flying colors. Now, the most time consuming testing, of course, was for all the electronic components. Capacitors were tested for capacitance, ESR, and parallel leakage. Resistors, diodes, and transistors were all tested for shorts and to also make sure that they were within tolerance of their values. All of the components ended up testing perfectly except for these three electrolytic capacitors which failed the leakage test and these two which had unacceptably high ESR. But for reliability's sake, I ended up replacing all the electrolytic capacitors with new ones regardless of how they tested and all the new electrolytics were tested as well and believe it or not, this brand new quality capacitor tested as faulty. Now, this happens to me more often than you might imagine, so do yourself a favor and test all components before installing them, whether new or old. Oh, you know, actually, come to think of it, there was one ceramic capacitor, which came with a kit, that I elected not to use. Not because it was faulty, but because there was a safer alternative. The kit calls for a 0.01 microfarad capacitor to be installed across the AC line right here. And this is a common practice to help absorb line noise. But if an ordinary capacitor is used in this position, it can create a safety hazard if it were to fail. So it's better to install a safety capacitor there instead. And those are unlikely to short no matter what catastrophic conditions they're subjected to. To learn more about safety capacitors, please see my video, Dynaco SCA80Q Amp Kit Part 5. I'll leave a link in the description. Here you can see the yellow safety capacitor I installed in this kit. Once I completed the construction of the amp, Heathkit called for a simple test procedure. You may recall from the first video in this series that during the unpacking, I came across a couple of incandescent bulbs and speculated that those would most likely be used not for display purposes, but instead for testing the amp near the end of the build process. And that turned out to be exactly the case. And the manual had me build these test fixtures from two bulb sockets, two power resistors, and two bulbs. These I temporarily installed at the test points of the main amp board and the following tests were performed. First, to press the power switch and ensure that the front panel LED lights, but that the two test lamps do not. Check. Next, push the speaker push button. You should hear a hiss and neither test lamp should light. Check. Now, place a screwdriver on both left and right phono inputs. The speakers should produce a loud hum and both test lamps should light. Check. The serial number sticker was then installed, the test lamps were removed, and jumpers were installed in their places. And after I installed the bottom cover and rubber feet, I spent many days putting the amp to the test. 
I left it running for long periods and ensured that all the functions were operating correctly. And for hours, I listened to both digital streaming and albums with the built-in phono section. And in every respect, the amp performed flawlessly, and it gave me plenty of listening enjoyment. So at that point, my ears were more than satisfied that the amp was performing to its specifications, but I wanted to confirm things with my eyes as well. So I connected it to my test setup and was happy to find that the amp produces almost 19 watts per channel with less than a half percent total harmonic distortion. That's much better than Heathkit's 15 watt per channel specification. And frequency response was exceptionally flat. Noise levels met or beat the 75 dB spec. Intermodulation distortion reached only a maximum of 0.32%, better than the half percent spec. And signal to noise ratio was respectable at about 65 dBs. So there you have it. Well, actually you don't have it yet, but you can. Remember, this is your last chance to win this amp for yourself. Just subscribe to my channel and leave a comment on any one of my YouTube videos. Each counts as one raffle ticket to win. And while you're reading all the official rules, please enjoy side one of the album PVD Breaks Volume 1 on vinyl. The recording was captured using the Heathkit AA1219's phono section, so it'll give you a great idea of just how good this little amp sounds. Enjoy and stay tuned for my next video where I'll announce the winner of this fantastic little amp. Good luck. The following program is down for the get down production.
Looking for a shiny new gadget for your bench? Some good books on electronics, vintage hi-fi or old radios? Indispensable tools, cleaners or other products? Check out my new Amazon shop and help the channel. Lots of great products I actually own, use and recommend. Plus my thoughts on each one. Link in the description. To stay updated, please subscribe to my channel and click the bell to receive notifications when I release new videos. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'll see you soon.